Hello! I'm ready to party. And I'm also ready to go into this thrift store. We're not going to do much partying in there, but we are going to find things to buy that we can sell for more money on the open market, baby. Websites like eBay, apps like Mercari, more websites like <laughs> Amazon. We're going to go in there, find undervalued things that people want, and we're going to get them to them. Let's go. So let's just take you through what I'm thinking. I see, ooh, a Samsung Blu-ray player. It's not huge, pretty small, compact, worth looking up. I make about 50 bucks on that. This is a DVD VCR combo Toshiba. Now, both of these I tested. When you see something like that, that purchased on 2008 date, uh, that signals to me not a reseller's bust to dump off. I'll still test it, but it, you know, it gave me hope. Uh, these iHomes. iHomes, if they have a Bluetooth or a lightning port input, I guess you might call it, are fine. But this 30 pin right there from the old, old, old iPods, those are not good to use and I recommend not buying them. Uh, everything else, definitely worth looking up on your app of choice, uh, whether you sell on eBay or Amazon. We've got some cooking stuff now, this uh, toaster oven. These are easy to sell. I didn't want to clean it though, so I left it there. Someone could easily have came after me, bought that, made 30, 40 bucks on there. Uh, beneath you saw a chicken rotisserie oven. Those sell good too. All of this stuff sells just because I don't buy it. Doesn't mean it's not worth you selling. It's just not what I put my time into. It's not, I don't want to clean things out like that. But if you want to, more power to you. It's a, a, a relatively open niche, I'd say. Now, I don't sell clothes. I hardly sell clothes. But I always look. I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, Vans independent hoodie. It was going for like 20 bucks. So again, if you're fine making, you know, 10 bucks. Oh, not <laughs> with that price. But I mean, things that are selling for less than like 100 or 80 bucks. It, I just don't have the motivation to list the clothing because there's I, I don't I'm not good at finding the little holes in back and I don't measure it right sometimes and just oh this is pretty nice too Missouri State these small you know I almost bought this these small uh, regional or like private colleges they have a more zealous fan base I guess because if you go to Missouri State and you want a hoodie or a, or a crew neck sweatshirt where are you gonna get one you might have to go to eBay uh, everything else though I mean eh, you know not the kind of stuff that I want to buy. Toys, however, I do sell a lot more toys. This caught my eye. It's a Hello Kitty uh, karaoke set. I thought it'd be worth a bunch of money. I mean, it seems like it has, you know, it's kind of a, a unique thing. Uh, it's, it's got branding. It's kind of outdated, I guess you might say. Uh, but when I went to look it up with, uh, you know, Hello Kitty, KT, whatever the model number is, it's going for like 25 bucks on Amazon. Now, is that worth your time? I don't know. But for me, I've got all these easy little things I can just put in, a, in a, a poly mailer, send to Amazon, and they ship it out using the FBA program. Why am I going to bother with something like that, that that's a bit bigger? You know, it's, it might be oversized. Um, I did buy this shirt. This is just for me. It's kind of funny. Like, this is an awesome design. If this was made in the year 1990, it'd be like a $500 shirt, but it's not. You know, the tag says it's made probably 10 years ago. Still, I liked it a lot. It's, a, you know, a bigger size. I'll wear this. Pretty cool. Uh, no harm in shopping for yourself, right? When you're outsourcing for your business. Not a bad stop. We're at a Goodwill now. We're going to pop over to a Target, then one more Target, then a Salvation Army, then maybe a Goodwill, and then probably home because I only have like three hours to thrift today and I want to make the most of it. Onward! You ever see something you think is going to be so awesome and you look it up and it's not? Those Cartoon Network DVDs, like, oh, awesome, they're going to be worth, like, 40 bucks a piece. No, they're worth, like, 5 10 bucks a piece. Uh, and they cost $3 at the thrift store. So even though I wanted to buy uh, Seasons 1 through 3 of Samurai Jack, I didn't because I'd, I'd buy it for 12 bucks. I'd sell it for $17, and I'd make, you know, 15 cents on all of this. They did have a Hi-Fi Stereo Sony VCR. I was amazed. This, this uh, Goodwill almost always picks the stuff and sells it on their own website. This one was here. I tested it for powering on, couldn't test for playback, uh, but I think it's gonna be fine. All right, so now we're going into a Target. I'm gonna look for some sports cards. The odds of me finding anything, maybe some baseball cards might be here, but what I want, so either like football or hockey or basketball cards is essentially zero. I mean, sometimes this is Target and they have rules about you can, how many you can get. Uh, and so having that like two limit 
makes more here obviously uh, but most of the time it's out of luck Yes, oh my god. That is amazing. How's it going, big time? I'm going one per guest, man. One per guest. One? I think you three. One. One pack of cards? Yep, one item overall. So the guy told me you can only buy one of each, which is totally fine by me. Like, I, I mean, if they didn't have that rule, there is no way in hell I would have gotten a pack of of these selects it was 10 bucks for a value pack i'm just i don't know i just like buying football cards so that's kind of sucks for people i guess who are trying to make a bunch of money doing this but um for me i was very pleased to understand that they're doing that kind of uh that kind of rules on their own you know property so we're at the second target right now if i get some more here that'd be nuts i mean it's only one one pack or one blaster box but still like That'd be cool. I don't know. We'll see. I guess at this store it's different. You gotta go up to guest services. We still have the one item per day. But uh, I guess they're all up there probably. No problem, let's go up there and see if they have any left. Okay, so I talked to guest services and they said that the vendor wasn't there yet today. Uh, which is fine, no big deal. And that from now on, like indefinitely I guess until this craze dies down, you're only gonna be allowed to buy one item each uh, at guest services. So for people like me, that's very good because I don't, you know, I'm not like paying off vendors to buy their routes or whatever, like some guys are. So I'm totally fine if I can just go here and buy one blaster box, you know, when I drive by, that's awesome, like for me. Uh, but just if you're curious, that's what's going on here in Michigan. At Walmart, it's still a free for all and at Meyer. Uh, at 3 p.m. on Fridays, that's like when they drop, I guess you might say. And um, you line up and get in line. It's, you know, I haven't done that because I'm usually busy on Fridays, but it seems to be that uh, stores are kind of taking more control over their inventory. All right, so we are at a third Target, and there's two reasons I'm doing this. One, they just happen to be on the route. Uh, and two, like I said, they have those restrictions on how many you can buy. And so for a casual, a uh, collector like myself, those rules, as the Germans say, are sehr gut. Very happy that uh, I might have a chance, although that guy looks pretty dejected right there, so maybe they're already sold out. So, same uh, story as the other, other store. The vendor hasn't been here yet. Um, so I guess there's like a dividing highway near Ann Arbor called 23. And I wonder if everything like east of 23 is its own separate vendor. I don't know, they're not here. Um, I'm not gonna stop by tomorrow probably, but the more you know, right? Third stop, this is where uh, I met up with Dante last week. I have about two and a half hours left to source this week of my allotted time. I'm only trying to source like uh, five hours this week because I have so much inventory to go through. Man, it's bright out. And uh, we'll do this, maybe two more stores, and then back to the warehouse to uh, drop it all off. All right, voiceover time. What do we got here? This appears to be a VCR. I'm saying it's a RCA, no, it's a Zenith VCR. That one I'm gonna sell on eBay. These plug and play toys, they go for about 25, 40 bucks around there. And this TI 5029, is that what it is? A uh, slow, slow, slow seller, but it will sell for about 50 bucks on Amazon, probably in like three months. I'm paying like four bucks for it, so whatever. These remotes, I looked them up. Sometimes remotes are big money. I've sold remotes for over $100, believe it or not. Uh, usually you're in like the $25 to $60 range, uh, but they're always worth looking up. The same with pretty much anything here, right? Like, why not look it up? Ooh, another Blu-ray player, a Samsung. Now, I sell this on Amazon because I am ungated, and Samsung, you might not be. So always make sure that you look up on the app you prefer to sell on. Ooh, a iHome. That's a... Uh, a Bluetooth iHome, if I recall correctly. Let's, let's check it out. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, I'm going to look that one up. What else do we have down here? Hmm. Ooh, sterno folding stoves. Now, I almost bought all of these. I didn't. I was going to pay like 20 bucks to make like 
another 20 bucks and it was no guarantee they could be broken the the fuel could be defective i really didn't know enough about them so you see me putting it in my cart right here but it went out uh, i bought these books here what i'm doing is uh i'm gonna try and sell these fba even though they're like kind of a higher sales rank because if you have been following my channel i'm gonna talk about this in a second uh there really are some weird inventory things going on with media sellers and we'll talk about that in the car when i get back but for now let's just check this stuff out and see what's going on in the rest of the store okay golf clubs i love selling golf clubs when they're good this is a cadillac c1 driver uh it's not worth anything but hell yeah it's pretty cool didn't buy it i imagine like back in the late 90s or mid 90s when you bought a cadillac you oh <laughs> that's a weird club when you bought a cadillac you like got a free complimentary set and they're just garbage now i've never seen this before that's a totally smooth face club everything here uh, you know not nothing nothing that good no no big brands so i'm gonna pass on all this okay so i showed you the books that i bought in there and they're nothing nothing special i think one book i might get like 15 bucks for fba but the reason i bought them is because i want to see something i want to experiment with something as many of you know amazon just changed their uh inventory rules for fba all of fba basically and for a lot of categories it was really awesome really good helps them have more inventory more new inventory um at their warehouses but for media sellers and booksellers i think in particular one of the ways that they've done business and i did this like two or three years ago and i've, I've moved on since then but it's essentially just like a, a process game where you're trying to process as many books as you can get them at fba warehouses and just you know let them be shipped out that way uh when the ipi scores or inventory placement index is that was called a yeah, ipi scores got uh put into into effect like a year and a half ago or two years ago whenever it was that kind of uh upended the game that was when i was like oh geez like it's time to start adapting a bit more um as many of you know i pulled out almost all of my fba inventory in march of 2020 because they were having huge issues and i didn't want to deal with refunds and all that nonsense so i that, and that was just me being lucky i didn't plan the head of, i didn't like you know have predictive powers or whatever uh but what's happening now is books and, and media in general are going to be a lot more difficult to uh, do FBA, especially for used products and especially, especially for used products on the higher end of what was previously the acceptable spectrum for storage because you had, you know, six months to, to sell them. And so you were more focused on having them sell in six months, not having them sell in a time period that kept your inventory score high and met all of the rules they have about uh, just good inventory practices. So what do I think is happening and what's going to be the future for uh, media resellers? So what I think is happening, and this is just my opinion, I could be totally wrong. I think that Amazon is moving towards only new products and they, they want to be the place where you buy new stuff because my hunch is that there are less returns, uh, less complaints, you know, from manufacturers or whatever, or customers to on both ends probably. And so I just see them doing little incremental steps pushing away used resellers. You may have seen a, a, an additional note on uh, collectible condition for uh, Amazon, you know, the guidelines they have. And essentially they're saying just like, make sure it's, you know, rare or, you know, out of print or whatever it is. Uh, but that's just, when they say these things, they're not just saying them because they want to say them. They're transitioning towards a more absolute uh, restriction on my assumption is used toys. I think that used toys, in two years are going to be a thing of the past on amazon um you know maybe i'm wrong who knows i could be i could totally be uh be too scared about this and so now that we you've heard what i think is going to happen how can how will media sellers booksellers in particular uh be affected by this and, and how will they get better you know in the future and so i think if you're a big bookseller this you're kind of screwed over if you were a big fba bookseller um, like Jensen Books, for example, who's got billions and billions, you know, not, I mean, hundred, probably hundreds of thousands of books uh, at FBA at any given time. So those, those days are going to be long gone where you could just store, you know, 2 million sales rank books for five months and have them, have them sold. Uh, everyone's going to have to restrict their, if you're a big bookseller and you are, you're pushing the upper end of your limits, uh, everyone's going to have to lower what their highest sales rank is going to be. And then you know what that's gonna create then is like a void gap from like i'm just if i had to guess i'd say like 1 million to 2 million 
where you're not gonna have a lot of big time booksellers FBA in those books, where more small time booksellers who are just, you know, picking, scanning at thrift stores like this, like I did today, uh, are gonna be able to go in there. And even though there's gonna be 50 uh, MF listings from the big guys, because they they can't um, they can't have this in their inventory. They can't they don't want to have a two million a two million sales rank book if they can have a one million sales rank book. Uh, that's like the whole idea is they're just crunching down on how many books you can have. And so because they're making this decision to focus on the lower sales end spectrum books, if you're someone like me who's I know I used to sell thousands and thousands of books a day. I was doing truckloads. It was a enormous amount. I'm doing now like maybe a hundred books a month. It's so, so, such a smaller amount. But this works out in my favor, I think, because now what I can do is I can focus on like the one to two million sales rank books because I'm not uh, maxing out my inventory quota. I can focus on those and charge a higher price because for used books, the buy box is gonna be an FBA listing. I, I mean, I assume they're not gonna change that. Uh, so it kind of creates like a cool, not like a bubble, but just uh, a new market is formed for low volume booksellers to focus on lesser sold books, but get more money out of them. Kind of, uh, you know, roundabout way of going about this, I guess. Like I said, I think it's Amazon pushing towards new products only, but uh, you know, us uh, individuals, the self-employed amongst us, our main goal is to adapt to the scaffolding that Amazon creates. And I think, like I said, it's gonna be bad for the big guys, but if you're watching this and you're doing, you know, less than, a thousand books a month less than 500 bucks a month it probably isn't gonna be that bad now that being said I haven't looked at what the limits are I have no clue it didn't I'm not even close to my limits um, I have no idea what they are for someone in a different position would love to hear your uh, feedback below in the comments because again this is all new for everyone and I'm sure your comments could help someone else watching the video and for everyone who's watching this it, it's, it's April 25th fifth the 26th day or end of April so if it's like August this is old news you've probably already adapted to it but for everyone in the interim uh, I think that we can create a good forum below in the comments and and share information amongst each other that is mutually beneficial for all parties involved okay that was a long a long little monologue on to the next thrift store okay so uh, was not able to go to that last thrift store. It's a few days later. I had to get back and get to work But what I do have is this pack still this is the pack that I paid a lot of money for it's like 10 bucks in store 15 cards and on eBay they're going for last I checked 50 bucks So I'm gonna do something to open this up and we're gonna see what you know if it's worth the hype I like collecting football cards. I have no issue foregoing that money uh, and there's also a good chance that inside here we find that one silver prism maybe uh, that that makes us all our money back. All right, so we uh, we got this going. Let's open this pack up now. Uh, there we go. I want to be gentle because if you ding up the cards, they're worth less. They also don't look as nice. Ooh. Look how fancy they are. Kirk Cousins, rookie Anthony McFarland Jr., TJ Watt, rookie Marlon Davis. Ooh, that's a good one. Rookie Jonathan Taylor with the X Lion. Hope he does well in uh, with the Rams. Matthew Stafford, Bradley Chubb. Rookie Denzel Mims. Ooh, hey! Whoa, nice! So this is a, a silver rookie select, Brandon Ayuk. That's awesome. He's he's pretty good. He's one of the uh, top receivers that they that they uh, they picked in the draft. Wow, it's a thick card too. Arizona State. He was taken in the first round last year, twenty fifth overall. DeAndre Swift, the Lions. I see why these packs are so cool. Derrick Henry. Whoa! Defensive Rookie of the Year, Chase Young. Select Rookie, nice! Cam Newton. Ben Roth. Is this a special card? It looks fancy, kind of. Prism, yeah, it's a Cam Newton Prism. Nice. A.J. Dillon and Ben Roethlisberger. So some good running back rookies. 
the Chase Young rookie, that was awesome. Uh, I, I'll pop up what those cards are worth. And thank you for watching the video. This was a vlog style. I love doing it, and I hope you enjoyed watching. And if it helped you make some money or give you some ideas to make your own money, please consider subscribing. Give it a big thumbs up. And leave a comment below with, uh, you know, something that I can learn from you. All right. See you later.